This is FX Medicine. I'm Andrew Whitfield Cook. We're here at the 2017 UIC Symposium, United in Compassion, in Melbourne. And I'm here sitting with Brooke Vogler, uh, who is a weeded warrior. Now, I think, Brooke, first you have to explain that term. A um, weeded warrior. Sure thing. So uh, a weeded warrior is um, the name that we've adopted for uh, to represent a group of veterans who've come together to speak about their experiences treating post-traumatic stress disorder and other service conditions with cannabis. Now I have to firstly, before we even begin anything, to thank you for your service. So Thanks. thank you. And Thanks to so all much. of the weeded warriors and indeed uh, all of the other service personnel out there. Um, so tell me about your experience. What happened or what did you come back with? PTSD, explain that. I guess, yeah, uh, even when I was in the Gulf on a ship, I was Navy, I um, started to have some symptoms that were pretty obvious to the people that were around me. I, yeah, I couldn't control my emotions. I was shaking and crying and um, I had a lot of anxiety going on. And um, yeah, I was referred to the ship psychologist. So that began a process of, um, yeah, regular treatment that you'd expect. So I was um, diagnosed with depression and um, I began treatment with an antidepressant and a psychologist. And um, the way it was handled in defence, uh, it's not the best way. And so, yeah, I sort of tried to manage my symptoms myself and felt that getting out of defence would be the answer. But yeah, in the years post-discharge, I um, really started to struggle with symptoms of post-traumatic stress disorder, which for me at that stage really started to affect my personal relationships and um, I couldn't control my moods mm. and um, I was having a lot of trouble uh, just functioning and being able to manage pain. I developed a chronic pain condition. I began to um, be prescribed a lot of different drugs to manage my anxiety and issues with sleeping and eating. So yeah, in the end I I was on an antidepressant, I was on fentanyl patches, benzodiazepines, Maxillon to control the nausea. Uh, I was struggling through work. I had to retire from a job in public service that I really enjoyed. And um, yeah, I, I started to struggle and I got desperate. I should point out for those people who are watching and listening that um, military personnel who apply for a position in the Defence Force mm actually go through a screening process of their psychological stability sure. and that you pass that. Yeah, you, yeah, you so do. this is from something that happened during your time with the Defence Force. Yeah, sure. yeah. So um, without delving into that too much, I, I want to sort of go on to the progression of these symptoms and, mm. and what happened with you mm. in society and indeed how you're treat, treated because you just mentioned uh, a, a situation of polypharmacy, mm. that you were now taking a drug to control the side effect of a previous drug. Mm. How bad did that get and what options did that leave you with? Well, for me, I guess I tried uh, that general treatment for about 10 years. So I... 10 years? Yeah, 10, 10 15 years. So I began on... So it's on, not like you didn't give it a go? No, I, I certainly might be one of those examples of someone who's exhausted some of the possibilities out there. And for me, um, I, I tried quite a few antidepressants because I found I got some really nasty side effects. So. They included um, really intense uh, migraines. Mm. I'd have trouble with my balance. I'd have electrical-like shocks, shocks yep. in my brain. Yep. I'd feel like I was being concussed and yeah, I was about to pass out. And um, I now sort of appreciate that a lot more in terms of um, sort of uh, the interactions of the different drugs that I was taking being quite toxic and also the load that it was putting on my body uh, in particular. I was able to use a really um, fantastic diagnostic tool, which is a blood test that um, was able to show me how well I was processing drugs or not in my case. And yeah, the clinical evidence backed up my experience, which was that I'm quite dysfunctional in metabolizing right. pharmaceutical drugs and cannabis has turned out to be probably the safest option for me and probably a better first choice for me than trying uh, different, harsher options to begin with. So can I ask you about your opinion of cannabis before or even in during the, uh, your time in the Defence Force? Were you pro or against? Or? Well, I actually towed the defence line for quite a while, which was that our, our drug use was... Uh, there's a, 
a zero tolerance policy, that's mm. what it's called. Mm. Mm. So um, I didn't have much of an experience of drugs growing up either. So um, I hadn't used any drugs by that stage, but my drug experience um, was in defence and that's where um, I got my introduction to recreational drugs and, and began my treatment with pharmaceutical drugs in particular for mental health. So my opinion was that um, and my practice was, like everyone else in defence, that it wasn't a topic yep. that you discussed openly with people, that, um, that the rules in defence shaped the way that we behaved about drugs and the yeah. type of drugs that were used in defence. Right. And, um, yeah, it uh, also went on to a job where I had to be aware and mindful about um, complying with the law. And so uh, it's... My, my intro, introduction to using cannabis was something I did um, uh, privately and um, it took a long while for me to uh, sort of come off medication and be mm. open about cannabis and, and I think that was you, sort of losing a lot of the um, practices that you develop in defence and in many jobs which is just to, to keep it quiet and to so not attract any attention to yourself. There was a really interesting talk given this morning about titrating off opiates. Mm. Um, did you find that was your experience? Uh, yeah, and not only off opiates, but yeah, antidepressants. So it wasn't a, me, yeah. yeah, same. It wasn't a quick sort of uh, change for me. It took about five years for me to wean off wow. antidepressants, which yeah, just shows how you know how serious those drugs are. They're mind-altering drugs, mm. and and um, they come with some serious side effects, including withdrawal symptoms and I couldn't I couldn't miss a dose by more than two or three hours without having those side effects so um for me it wasn't a quick um process to come off those drugs cannabis helped me to be able to do that gently and um yeah to recover my my um ability to eat and sleep and and function yeah so, so there's great interest in um, many different aspects of PTSD, um, not with m not which of which the smallest is cannabis. That was really poorly said. <laughs> um, what do you hope for our active service personnel to be able to access medicinal cannabis? Wow, in, yeah, that's a, in that's a really need? interesting um, question because we are, we tend to focus on veterans. Now that cannabis is a legal medicine, that's, that's something we need to ask. Is there a place for cannabis for active personnel? And um, there's certainly a place for understanding how we can be more resilient and um, look after our endocannabinoid system to um, better respond to stress. But um, I, I'd love to see the Department of Veterans Affairs and, and the Department of Defence take a real interest in cannabis for PTSD treatment to um, yeah, to really help them manage the mental health of people serving and, um, yeah, to, to really tackle the suicide rates and, mm. uh, yeah, mm. some of the horrific I guess prevention is often, an ounce of prevention is better than a pound it of is, cure. But yeah. um, with regards to access um, and criminality, mm. these sort of aspects mm. of being a weeded warrior, mm. can you go explain a little bit about that? Uh, well, I guess there are a lot of obstacles at the moment uh, for veterans for access and um, something that we're particularly mindful of is having to sort of comply by Commonwealth law in regards to the Department of Veterans Affairs. Right. So, um, yeah, veterans are still, are still exposed to, um, to um, arrest for using cannabis and, yeah, they are really concerned about the law and um, they need to be mindful that, um, that, that a lot of them sort of receive their income from the government and, and they really need legal options. They don't want to break the law. So as much as, um, as um, we encourage cannabis, we want, we want people to be able to do it without it adding to their stress. Yeah. yeah. And I guess where I was going to there with regards to a trigger mm -hmm. um, was how did you find... Um, the appropriate access that's available and, and what do you think about the, the um, reasons for the various uh, delays in access that have been given by uh, medical fraternities, bureaucrats, politicians? Yeah, I guess um, some of the delay has been around legislation and there's still some more of that sort of coming through, trickling through, particularly you know, in New South Wales with the bill 
uh, proposed before the parliament, but we really need a Commonwealth, uh, this to be addressed as a Commonwealth issue, which it has been. It's sort of the reverse of the states at the moment. But, um, yeah. So. Brooke, thank you so much for sharing your story and indeed thank you so much for your service. Okay, thanks very much. This is FX Medicine. I'm Andrew Whitfield-Cook.